Hello, my name's Pat Painter. I'm the watershed manager for the City of West Palm Beach Public Utility Department. And uh, I'm here today to uh, introduce you to your watershed. And this is a particular time that I come back every year from now on and start talking to you about droughts. I know it may not look like we're in a drought, it may look like we have plenty of water, but on our doorsteps is a 100-year uh, drought coming our way. And we may get some relief with rainfall and it'll all go away, but uh, in order to prepare, we need to be aware. And that's why I'm here. Now the watershed I speak of is not only Clear Lake, and Lake Mangonia, which make up about 1,010 acres. We also have Grassy Waters Watershed, which makes up about 12,800 acres, or roughly 20 square miles. You're really source of water upstream of here. I'm here to introduce you to a new process that I'd like you to participate in and maybe become observational of. These little stakes out here have years on them. And they actually mark years of droughts that we've had this decade. We're going into the fourth drought in one decade, which is somewhat unprecedented in the history of South Florida. We've had droughts that extend for more than one year, but to have these sequential droughts like we're having now is somewhat of an oddity and they may be a precursor of something that's out there, a trend maybe, who knows? But we need to get better informed about what to do when they come so we can protect our water supply both at Grassy Waters and here. Now, just to put you in perspective of why we're in a drought, every system in South Florida runs and operates because of rainfall. And we as water managers, basically all we do is manage rainfall here. And when we don't get enough rainfall, eventually we start getting into drier and drier periods every winter, which are dry anyway, which sometimes can actually trigger a drought. Now these droughts can have long duration. They can last normally from November to almost the first of June or they can extend way back into summer sometimes if we have a dry summer. Now we're setting in a, a drought scenario right now mainly because of lack of rainfall. We've had as a background the driest October, the driest November, the driest December, the driest January and February in 80 years recorded history. So we're in somewhat unfamiliar ground here. We're heading into March at almost 50 percent reduced amount of rainfall. So we're heading into something that we've maybe not seen the likes of in a long time. But these actually represent at least some historical perspective in context of where we've been. The 2007 drought was uh, an eye-opener for the city. Uh, we got dangerously in the area of uh, really needing water from other sources. Luckily, rain came. 2009, a hundred-year drought event. We made it through very well, mainly because we had managed our water well at the source up in grassy waters as well as the lakes. These all show levels of shoreline that eventually you're going to see as this drought progresses. So don't be alarmed when you see the shoreline. We've been here before. From an all-time drought, we have 2001. It took us down to elevation 10. These are all elevation 11, 1, 11, 2, but the 2001 really drew us down. 
Now right now, that would mean that this whole lake would go down almost two feet, six inches. And what that means by water supply is that the, the lake actually shrinks in the amount of pool it's got. So we need to be mindful. We're out here at uh, Clear Lake. We are removed a month from the last time we were here. And water levels a month ago, only a month ago, were this high. You can see that our lakes are dropping. And what that really translates out to be is our water supply is dropping. We need to react to it in ways that are meaningful from here on out. It's time to start conserving water, seriously, conserving water. And that conservation of water will translate out into meaningful long-term supplies that we may have readily available to us. We're only in April right now. Pretty soon we've got another whole month of May that is normally the dry season here in Florida. We haven't had any appreciable rain since the end of September. So we are testing the resolve of the city, of the citizens that live in the city, in Palm Beach and South Palm Beach, to join us in a conservation effort that will resonate well beyond these shorelines, well back to the source of our water supply. Now, we've been seeing rainfall dancing around us all morning. And unfortunately, I think it, uh, it moved beyond us. So the promise of rain, once again, has eluded us. And rainfall, it takes about an inch of rain to give us one day's water supply here, about 26 million gallons of water. One inch of rain over all these lakes. So don't think that these little drizzles that we've been getting are really going to take us out of the drought. Um, that is not the way that nature works. These are spatial relationships. This is a very, very large lake. And uh, even when we get an inch of rain, with these hot days, windy and sunny days, about 50% of that evaporates away, plus we have seepage to deal with. So we are reaching our limits to where everybody needs to become concerned about water. But the real stakes are way upstream, almost nine, 10 miles west of us, and that's where we're going next. Conservation translates out positively the whole way back to here, Grassy Waters Preserve. This is where the real water begins in the city of West Palm Beach. It nurtures life as we know it in uh, South Florida as far as wildlife goes. It holds about uh, anywhere from 20 billion to 32 billion gallons of water each year. The water level normally is about right here. So you can see that even here we're dropping just like we were at Clear Lake. Um, this area could be drained very easily if conservation doesn't become an implied practice within the city. So we're asking you, um, look at what is to be sacrificed if we don't conserve water in the city of West Palm Beach. Um, we are all in this together as participants and we need to really be thoughtful of our actions from here on out. We're reaching critical water supply levels in the city and we need to really think about what we do from here on out. This is what's at stake. Um, it's, it's large, but it's very shallow as you can see. It holds a lot of water, but it can't sustain unlimited demands on it. So. When you use your water like it's unlimited, 
this is what you're really sacrificing. The shorelines are going to drop in the city, but this place, when it drops, it becomes critical to an incredible array of species that depends on us to manage it properly. Well, we have reached June 9th today. Only three months ago, in March, I was standing in water up to here. Shoreline has certainly gone down. It even goes beyond the, the 20 inches of rainfall that we're behind on right now. And rainfall is the one thing that every system, every municipality, every water supply depends on in South Florida is rainfall. If we don't get rainfall, we get this. We get droughts. And we have normal rain, rainy seasons. We have normal dry seasons. They're both about six months apart. So we have to reconnect ourselves every year to the possibilities that something like this can reoccur. The 2007, the 2009 contour lines now are beaches. Even the precedent setting 2001 is now clearly out of the water. You can see where the water was up to here. And it went the whole way up to the shoreline. Now it's the regression has really, really started. This calls for some really serious consideration from everybody out there because the little bit of water that we do have left, and not only here, but back to grassy waters, our catchment area, is now in your hands to see how long we can hold on with what we do have as a resource. Um, if we don't practice conservation, the consequences are inevitable that uh, the water is even going to become even more scarce. Only two months ago, I was standing in knee-deep water here. As you can see, grassy waters, which is our catchment or uh, water supply most of the year, has uh, gone through some changes itself, very similar to what we witnessed over in Clear Lake and Lake Mangonia. Being responsible co-inhabitants of this system, uh, much more so than what you may see at uh, Clear Lake, uh, this area has wildlife connected to it. So when the water goes down here, we're not just affecting our, our uh, water at the tap, we're actually affecting uh, the survival of a lot of different species that uh, rely on water or the presence of it, even though it may be a little bit, uh, to survive. It's very dry in this particular place. Um, even with the best management practices that we uh, were able to bring to this system this year, we're still under this severe drought suffering from a tremendous amount of drawdown. There's still pools further out from this locale where wildlife is able to at least forge and maintain some semblance of survival. Uh, those days are numbered. Uh, if we keep relying on this system as our primary recharge to Clear Lake. Our present use of water is uh, unsustainable and this area cannot be sustained if, if our overuse uh, still remains our common practice. The city is very unique because it, it depends on, on a catchment or surface water. And this is where the surface water begins. Every year it collects 13 
14 billion gallons of water, sometimes upwards of 20, 30, according to the rainy season. Um, it is our legacy. It's been in the family of this community in Palm Beach and South Palm Beach for over 100 years. And uh, we manage it as best we can. The water doesn't come from your tap in reality. That's just the end product. It really starts here and uh, really starts up in the clouds. And uh, hopefully the clouds will start uh, building again. We're in uh, almost mid-June. We really haven't had rain. Uh, normally by this time we, we're into the rainy season. This is a 27 square mile marsh. Without rain though, uh, somewhat uh, it's up to the physical nature of South Florida. And that is what is happening now. And we've given it a name, it's called drought. Uh, each drought we learn something from it. Each drought has a teachable moment. Uh, over the coming weeks, if we don't get more rain, believe me, there will be teachable moments. We have enacted the city in a preemptive, proactive stand uh, in a measure of adaptability to the conditions that are upon us. We are going to a one day a week watering. And what that means is that uh, the odd resident addresses will only water once a week from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. and the even is on Thursday from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Let's preserve what we've got. Remain resilient, we have to conserve. Just a week ago, we were out here on the lake itself and we were talking about the conservation measures that had to be implied or else uh, we were going to have to enact some rather unique and novel uh, contingency plans that we've always had. Uh, we've had these plans for years, ever since the 2007 drought. We've never had to implement them because it is so involved and it's a pretty complex uh, means to an end. What we're doing here is this area here where the sheet piling is actually segments and segregates the larger lake from the basin intake lake. And these three pump heads, which they've got the first one in right now, these pumps will actually resupply our intake basin with water from the larger lake. So what we're doing is we're basically segregating the five acre intake lake and utilizing the 950 acre lake system that we have supported by this floating barge that has the pump heads on it. So this barge can keep going down, 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 down if necessary until we get rain. It pretty much guarantees us that we aren't gonna run out of water uh, we really are not out of water. We're just uh, at our limits as far as what the water treatment plant uh, feels safe at. The lake right now is at 10 feet. The barge is parked over a hole that is minus seven. So we've got about 17 feet of water in the whole lake system. And this includes Clear Lake and Lake Mangonia. Without surface water, particularly in the form of wetlands, to capture and store water, there is no groundwater. There is no recharge. There's no replenishment to groundwater. So in a lot of ways, West Palm Beach is really doing the right thing all along by utilizing surface water. 
if everybody had what we had in our backyard and theirs, we probably wouldn't be in this dire situation right now. There is the possibility of over extracting from that groundwater. So we can't fool ourselves into thinking that just because you can put a pipe in the ground, you can just pump without limits. For anybody to imply that they don't know we're in a serious drought situation, come down here, stand here after these pumps are running and tell me we're not. That far water treatment plant with the tower over it, the reason why we say it's limiting is because the lake levels right now are at 10, the intake's at eight. At these levels, you start running the risk of cavitation of a pump where it's sucking as much air as it's sucking water. That's not a good thing. The other water treatment plant that we have, the smaller one, the newer one, is set at six which gives us a little bit of flexibility right now to take this measure, to take this step, to protect us, to assure that this always gets water. Well, a week ago, we were out here, and this was, uh, this was actually going in, the installation of it. Uh, this is part of our contingency plan when things get uh, to the point where we have water in the whole reservoir, but uh, there's growing concerns that our limiting factor back at the intakes uh, may play in restricting how much water we can get. So the segregation, the bigger lake, and we keep water filled in to our intake basin. We're supplying good fresh water right back into the intake basin and we don't have to uh, really concern ourselves at this point, uh, you know, of running out of water. That's not really a concern. Uh, if you look down at those posts though, you'll see the water mark. That's how high we are generally in the rainy season. We need at least 27 inches just to get where we need to, to be even with where we are and then as you can see we need a little bit more even after 27 inches to come up to where we normal standard stage level is during the summertime so we've got some making up to do obviously we we need rain we can't assume that we can always have plans like plan B and plan C to take the place of uh, true conservation in the city of West Palm Beach and Palm Beach. A week ago, uh, this was uh, a shallow pool of water. There were a lot of opportunistic feeding with uh, wildlife out here. Uh, you can still see their footprints here. But uh, as you can see, uh, evaporation in these dry, dry days that we've been having with no rain, no appreciable rain whatsoever, um, this is the result. Uh, this gray matter that's lying on the ground here is, is actually uh, paraphyton, which is an algae colony that uh, only exists in real high quality freshwater wetlands. And this is what it does. It, uh, it's got a little bit of clay matter to it, so it cakes up. And this looks like, for all intents and purposes, a desert. <laughs> and it's still got moisture underneath it, but uh, it's just a matter of days uh, before it disappears. Um, not saying that conservation could have prevented this or saved it, but uh, it is part of the ongoing story that we're going to have to tell after this drought is gone. We need to better prepare ourselves both mentally and uh, almost spiritually in a way to where we handle droughts a little bit differently than we have. Um, these are results of somewhat consumption. Um, they're wetlands. They they recharge the groundwater, 
um, and they supply abundant opportunities for other life forms to exist. Uh, when they're dry like this, as you can see, there's not much wildlife out here. Um, there's not much going on. And whatever has burrowed down into these soils, you know, they may make it if it doesn't get much drier. There's still moisture here, um, but uh, it's only here for so long. We're hoping that some of these clouds that are building up in the west will actually impart some relief and rain. Uh, that's what we really need. This whole system relies on rain. And in reality, we as humans, as uh, consumers, as citizens of West Palm and Palm Beach and South Palm Beach, we rely on rain as well. Everybody needs to th begin thinking resiliency. Uh, it's questionable whether water will ever be sustainable if these type of climate uh, alterations keep occurring year after year after year. So, as I said at the very beginning of this, this story, um, back in March, this is unprecedented. Uh, four droughts in one decade. We need to become a little bit more observant as citizens. Uh, we're co-inhabitants here with uh, everything that's implied in South Florida, including uh, the weather. When we make choices about how to manage, conserve, and use our water, we need to consider the impacts of our choices, both immediately and in the long run, on other creatures who share this watershed with us. Most of the time, our lack of attention to the very way of our lifestyles and how it impacts other creatures is not due to callousness toward them, rather, but simply to a lack of awareness of it. Out of sight, out of mind, we rarely see how other creatures struggle and often die from lack of water. In a way, we never know the true value of water until it's not there.